During this training, you will learn what Reduced Vertical Separation Minimum, or RVSM, is, why RVSM has been implemented, where RVSM is effective, and the requirements to fly in RVSM airspace. In this presentation, we will cover training compliance, reference documents, background information about RVSM, required equipment for operation in RVSM airspace, flight planning considerations, before takeoff procedures, equipment checks before entry into RVSM airspace, in-flight procedures, contingency operations in the event the flight crew is no longer able to comply with RVSM requirements, post-flight actions, and emphasis items. This presentation satisfies flight crew training requirements for safely conducting RVSM operations anywhere in the world. Notice the list of RVSM guidance reference material. These documents detail airworthiness and operations programs to approve operators and airplanes to conduct flights in RVSM airspace. Refer to your company's operations manual for information and guidance pertaining to RVSM. For additional guidance pertaining to RVSM, please refer to the sources on this slide. RVSM was implemented to reduce the vertical separation minimum of aircraft operating above flight level 290 through flight level 410, inclusive from 2,000 feet or 600 meters to 1,000 feet or 300 meters. The primary benefits of RVSM are that it allows carriers to fly more optimum profiles, it enhances ATC flexibility, it increases fuel savings, and it allows for an increase in airspace capacity. Today, RVSM represents a global standard for 1,000 feet or 300 meter vertical separation. An aircraft is required to meet and maintain RVSM certification to conduct operations in RVSM airspace. The image on the left side of the screen depicts flight operations from flight level 290 through flight level 410 in non-RVSM airspace. The image on the right side of the screen depicts flight operations at the same altitudes in RVSM airspace. Required equipment for RVSM operations includes two independent altitude measurement systems, an altitude reporting transponder, an altitude alert system, and an automatic altitude control system or autopilot. The image at the bottom of the screen depicts the altitude alerting system on the 737NG. When an airplane deviates from a selected altitude, a momentary tone sounds and the current altitude box turns amber and begins to flash. Behavior of this system varies by model and option, so consult your FCOM for further guidance. When planning for a flight, verify the aircraft is approved for RVSM operations. Ensure the flight plan is properly annotated to show the aircraft is authorized for RVSM operations. Check the reported and forecast weather on the route of flight. Also, consult the limitation section of your FCOM to confirm the minimum equipment requirements for altimeters and any restrictions related to RVSM airworthiness approval. Note that the standby altimeter may not meet accuracy requirements for RVSM operations in a contingency situation. Before takeoff, the following pre-flight tasks should be accomplished. Review the maintenance logs and forms to ensure RVSM equipment is functioning properly. During the exterior inspection, pay attention to the condition of the altimetry measuring equipment, such as static ports. Prior to departure, check the altimeters. The difference between known airfield altitude and altimeters should not exceed 75 feet or 23 meters. 
Note that alternative QFE procedures may be used in place of the listed airfield elevation procedure if required. The two primary altimeters should be within limits specified by the FCOM. Equipment required for flight in RVSM airspace should be operational and malfunctions should be resolved. Before RVSM airspace entry, the following equipment must be operating normally. Two independent altitude measurement systems, an operational transponder, an altitude alert system, and an autopilot. If any required equipment fails prior to entry into RVSM airspace, the pilot should request a new clearance that avoids flight through that airspace. In flight, the following procedures should be used. Altimeters should be set to 29.92 inches of mercury or 1013.2 hectopascals when climbing through the transition altitude. Recheck for proper altimeter setting when reaching the initial cleared altitude. At cruise flight, the two primary altimeters should agree within 200 feet or 60 meters or a lesser value if specified in the FCOM. At one hour intervals, make cross checks between the primary altimeters and the standby altimeter. The normal scan of flight deck instruments should suffice for altimeter cross checking on most flights. When operating in radar or surveillance airspace, the initial altimeter cross check should be performed after level off. In oceanic and remote continental or procedural airspace, a cross check should be performed and recorded at the point where that type of navigation begins such as during coast out. The readings of the primary and standby altimeters should be recorded and available for use in contingency situations. Normally, the altimetry system being used to control the aircraft should be selected to provide input to the altitude reporting transponder transmitting information to ATC. In-flight procedures also require the airplane comply with all operating restrictions and limitations, ATC clearances, and the flight crew returns to the cleared flight level as quickly as possible if notified of a deviation by ATC. If ATC notifies the pilot of an assigned altitude deviation error equal to or exceeding 300 feet or 90 meters, then the pilot should take action to return to the cleared flight level as quickly as possible. The exception to this deviation would be from the result of a TCAS resolution advisory. If a TCAS resolution advisory response requires deviation from an ATC clearance, expeditiously return to the current ATC clearance when the traffic conflict is resolved. The TCAS clear of conflict message is heard or follow any subsequent change to clearance as advised by ATC. For the autopilot system, the aircraft should not be allowed to overshoot or undershoot a cleared flight level by more than 150 feet or 45 meters. It is recommended that any level offs are accomplished using the altitude capture feature of the autopilot. The automatic altitude control system should be operative and engaged during level cruise. Automation may be disabled if necessary during turbulence. Also, the altitude alerting system should be operational. During some situations, a flight crew may no longer be able to comply with the minimum requirements for RVSM airspace. Examples may include failure of automatic altitude control systems, loss of an altimeter, or loss of thrust on an engine necessitating a descent. If the flight crew is unable to comply with RVSM requirements after entering RVSM airspace, request a new clearance from ATC as soon as possible. If a new clearance is not available, or if the nature of the emergency requires quick action, the pilot should notify ATC of their intentions. Operators should refer to the RVSM section of the AIM chapters 4 through 6 or the appropriate national AIP when experiencing abnormal situations and implementing contingency procedures. It is also the responsibility of the flight crew to notify ATC when the implementation of contingency procedures is no longer required.
RVSM airspace post-flight actions include making detailed maintenance logbook entries against malfunctioning equipment. For altimetry systems, record the following information as appropriate. Primary and standby altimeter reading, altitude selector setting, subscale setting on altimeter, autopilot used to control the airplane and any differences when the alternate system was selected. Also, record any differences in altimeter readings if alternate static ports were selected during flight or the air data computer or ADC selector was used for fault diagnosis. Finally, note the transponder selected to provide altitude information to ATC. RVSM requirements vary worldwide. Operators are responsible for knowing the RVSM procedures in the areas of intended operations. Operators starting RVSM operations in an area new to them should ensure their programs incorporate policy and procedures unique to the new area of operation. Crew members should cross-check each other to ensure ATC clearances are promptly and correctly complied with. Crew members should also be familiar with the use and limitations of the standby altimeter in contingencies. Use static source correction cards where applicable. Problems with visual perception of other airplanes at 1,000 feet or 300 meters planned separation during darkness when encountering local phenomena for opposite and same direction traffic and during turns. The characteristics of aircraft altitude capture systems that may lead to the occurrence of overshoots. The operational procedures related to TCAS operations in an RVSM operation. The relationship between the altimetry, automatic altitude control, and transponder systems in normal and abnormal situations. And aircraft operating restrictions related to RVSM airworthiness approval. This concludes your training on RVSM. In summary, we have learned what RVSM is, what the requirements are for flying in RVSM airspace, how to identify requirements, and what procedures are required for RVSM at various phases of flight.